So you've been seeing a lot about this Dungeons and Dragons game, but you're not really sure what it is or how you can play it. Well, don't worry because this video serves as the ultimate quick start guide to help you not only find out those answers, but also help you discover groups near you that you can begin to play epic quests with. So with that being said, let's get started. First off, I am not surprised at all that a ton of new people are showing interest in D&D. Despite having been around for decades, it's become increasingly popular over the past couple of years, having cameos in cartoons, shows, and movies, as well as surprisingly the number one stream on Twitch being a group of people that play Dungeons and Dragons. So what exactly is D&D? Put simply, D&D is a tabletop role-playing game, or a TTRPG. And just like a role-playing video game, you play as a character that has to go on a quest to solve some sort of problem, some of them small, and other ones huge planetary deals. What separates D&D from a standard video game, however, is the fact that it's able to be extremely adaptive to whatever the characters decide to do, and it's also meant to be played at a tabletop, thus the TTRPG, or something that at least replicates a tabletop situation. So yes, you don't have to play D&D in person, you can play it online with your friends if they live in other states through things like BT. And honestly, getting started with the game is incredibly simple. You don't need a whole lot of things. All you need is a group of players, as well as a DM or a GM, who helps to run the game and control the narrative and help guide the players through their adventures. After that, you're basically ready to go, with all you really needing is a character sheet, a set of dice, as well as a rulebook to help you with some of the more nuanced parts of the game's mechanics. Oh, and also, don't forget your favorite snacks, because on average, a single D&D session can take anywhere from two to four hours. So be sure that you're comfortable, but honestly, don't worry, because that time flies by when you're playing. When creating a character you have to choose their race and there are a ton of them from the standard elf, dwarf, and humans to more unique things like gith and aarakocra. There are a ton of races and they all have special abilities that go alongside them. And don't worry, I'll have separate videos that go and break those down into further detail, but for now that's really all that you need to know. Once you've decided on a race, however, you then choose a class, and these are sort of like the jobs or the roles that your character plays. And there's a ton of these as well, where you can play as clerics, paladins, rogues, or even sorcerers and warlocks. And just like your race gives you special abilities, your class also helps you determine what types of weapons and armor you can use, as well as a bunch of unique characteristics that are specifically for that class. Now that you have your character sheet and you're ready to actually play the game, it's time to get into the gameplay cycle of D&D, which I like to call the three Ds, descriptions, decisions, and dice rolls. Because D&D is meant to be primarily played in your imagination, description is a huge part of the gameplay, with the DM or the GM describing a situation or environment to you that helps to carry the narrative along, and then your players have to decide what they do in response to whatever the DM has just described. Subscribed. For example, the DM might begin to describe that you and your party are in a tavern, and while there, a couple of bandits show up and begin to harass a bunch of patrons around the pub. And with that information, your players now get to decide how they're going to handle the situation. Are they going to go ahead and let the harassment from these bandits continue, or are they going to try to take things into their own hands, either through things like combat intimidation, or maybe they'll just simply bribe the bandits to go away. There's a lot of different things that you can do, and that's what makes D&D so fun, is that when your players decide what they want to do, it's completely open to what Whatever they can imagine. So going back to that band example, depending on how your players decide to deal with it, they now have to make a skill check or a dice roll that most closely correlates to whichever way they're dealing with a situation. Or maybe your player chose just to fight off the bandits, in which case during combat you will also be rolling dice to try and gauge the odds of you actually being able to hit an enemy. Depending on how high your dice roll is, you'll either succeed or fail the specific type of action that you were attempting to make. And then we loop all the way back down to your DM, who then describes your success or your failure and how the enemy might respond. And there we continue the never-ending cycle of description, decisions, and dice rolls. But don't be worried, because even though dice are a critical part of the D&D game, they don't actually constitute everything that you're going to be doing. Going back to its RPG roots, a lot of the times players might just be interacting with the world, discussing and making conversation with NPCs, and trying to gather information for their next adventure, in which case dice rolls might not even be included. And that's actually one of the reasons why Critical Role is so popular, because yes, even though Critical Role does things like dice rolls as they play the game, a lot of the things that really shine about their streams and make them so popular is is the fact that the players talk in character to one another and help make their story and adventure seem more real. So with that, you now know that D&D is a tabletop role-playing game where you as a player go about a journey that is being guided by a DM or a GM. And oftentimes these adventures are either going to be completely made up by the DM and they're called homebrew, or perhaps something that is commercially released such as a module. Regardless if you're playing a homebrew or a module, as you go through your adventure, the ultimate gameplay loop is going to be descriptions of what exactly is going on, decisions as to how the players react, and then 
dice rolls to determine if you're actually going to be successful in the actions that you decided to do. And the reason why this game is growing in popularity is because it is incredibly fun and immersive. So while video games might be able to guide you through a single narrative, Dungeons and Dragons is meant to be adaptive and heavily play off of whatever the players put into it and the DM gives back, making the fantasy world feel all the more organic and really give the impression that whatever decisions or actions your player makes truly matter to the outcome of the story. Unlike in video games where that's sort of more of an afterthought and regardless of how you play the game, it's going to lead to the same ending. So you now know what Dungeons and Dragons is and how to play it, but how do you now find people to actually play the game with? There are a ton of resources, but if you're really looking for a more professional way to get started with your game, I highly recommend startplaying.games. This website helps to match DMs with players and specific types of games, because yes, you can find more than just D&D on this website. As you go about the website, you can choose what game you're looking to play and then begin to peruse their huge amount of listings for not only the days that certain groups meet, but also what types of adventures they'll be having in their campaigns. And if you find a group that you like that has an availability open, you are free to go ahead and join them. But just a heads up, oftentimes to join these groups, you have to pay a little bit of money in order to take part at this table. But considering that you're gonna be getting a more professional experience, it's honestly gonna be probably worth it. That being said, if you want to just dip your toes and give D&D a try and not really have to pay at all, I would highly recommend looking at things like local Facebook groups, which more often than not will actually have specific D&D groups for your area. And if all else fails, actually the number one thing that I would recommend you try to do is go to local gaming stores to see if they'll have events for new players to go ahead and try different types of game systems, including D&D. And with that, you are now ready to start your adventures in Dungeons and Dragons. I plan on turning this into a full series, not only going over how you can create characters that you can play as, but also if you want to be a DM, how you can create immersive worlds for your players to begin to go on adventures. So if you've got questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. And if you are a more experienced player with some tips for newcomers, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. And maybe I'll include them in a future video. Thanks for sticking around and until next time, keep questing.